Hi everyone. In our earlier lecture, we had discussed the macroeconomic goals, as in how an economy targets to uh, minimize the business cycles. The key goals of the macroeconomic policies are relating to the internal stability that relates to the reduced inflation and a lower unemployment. The external stability that relates to the stable currency for a nation and the stable balance of payments. Likewise, the sustained economic growth are some of the key macroeconomic goals. When it comes to macroeconomic policies, as in monetary policy, one of the major goals as in for the Reserve Bank is to set a target rate of inflation, that is the headline inflation as a part of its efforts to achieve price and currency stability. So uh, we do have the inflation targeting as one of the key goals in context of Australian Reserve Bank of Australia that executes the monetary policy. And moving on now, in this session, I'll take you through the financial indicators monitored by the Reserve Bank and how the interest rate is actually changed or manipulated, as we call it, uh, as a part of the monetary policy for the bigger goal of a stable economy and especially the inflation targeting. Um, so what are the financial indicators monitored by the Reserve Bank? Uh, before it actually uh, before it implements or executes its monetary policy so any changes in that uh, are dependent on the indicators uh, which reserve bank monitors very carefully as in the wages growth so you could see it if, if the wages are continuously rising up it would simply mean that it may actually lead to inflationary pressures on the economy in terms of um, the the cost push inflation Likewise, it continues to monitor um, definitely the consumer price index, which is relating to the, the changes in the price level. And if inflation targeting is our goal, uh, goes without saying that Reserve Bank would continue to focus on the CPI very, very carefully. And then as the, okay, I'm just looking at uh, inflationary expectations. So referring to the inflationary expectations is uh, that uh, how the uh, overall market scenario is, and it is done through the business service. So if the inflationary expectations are high, you would understand it very clearly that expectations are likely to lead to the real, real situation. So if people are expecting that the price levels are likely to go up, it could actually boost the aggregate demand in the current times. And it could also mean relatively lesser aggregate supply and thus lead to inflation much quicker. So if these inflationary expectations are high, Reserve Bank would want to ensure that it implements or it takes uh, the monetary policy action at the earliest. Likewise, the exchange rate. So how is the exchange rate? Uh, is, the, is the dollar value going up or going down? And based on that, it would take the policy measures. And alongside uh, the rate of economic growth. So again, if the economy is going well, um, just on the optimistic scenario, let's say in that situation, Reserve Bank would anticipate that the price levels are also likely to go up because as the GDP goes up, price level goes up. Uh, and um, income output employment, everything increases during the times of boom. And now the implementation of monetary policy taking you on the idea of the monetary policy. Um, earlier, it used to be by monetary targeting, as in terms of by changing the money supply in the financial markets and by changing the money supply, it could uh, manipulate the interest rate, the cash rate and the interest rate. Uh, and just changing the monetary base was the way of targeting um, the monetary policy actions. Uh, however, this has not been used in Australia since mid 80s. So um, we would be moving on to our next uh, one that is presently implemented and that is by controlling the official cash. Before we even get 
going with what is this cash rate we need to understand um, or how does it all work because so far you have learned this that yeah the the economy can you know if the expansionary monetary policy in the previous chapters you've learned that if the government wants to go for an expansionary monetary policy or it needs not the government rather the money uh, the reserve bank uh, it would uh, reduce the interest rate and boost the economy and leading to increase in aggregate demand that's what precisely you have learned in your earlier sessions on the other side if it wanted to de uh, deflate the economy or if the price level is going up too much it may choose to increase the interest rate and thus decrease the aggregate but you have not learned so far as to how does the reserve bank manage to get the interest rate in the market set according to its policy decision and this is what you're going to be learning in this particular talk so let us take a simple approach to start with uh, what is reserve bank i have already explained and did mention about it as the topmost or the apex bank for any country and just like as we have our accounts with the commercial banks, the commercial banks, all of them maintain accounts that are called ESA, that is the exchange settlement accounts with the reserve bank. So what are these exchange settlement accounts? All the banks or all financial institutions must hold exchange settlement accounts with the reserve bank. These exchange settlement accounts are basically to settle the transactions between the banks, so intra-bank transactions at the end of each day have to be settled, right? So if, if uh, you know, Bank E has received a check that needs, to be, uh, that needs to be paid to Bank A, let's say, and Bank, maybe and Bank A has to pay to Bank C, or Bank D has to pay to Bank B, or Bank B has to pay to Bank E, you know, there are a lot of transactions just like how we have in the real world the transactions among ourselves. Likewise, even the banks would have received checks in each other's names. So at the end of the day, they have to settle down. So to settle down or to settle down these um, accounts or to settle these transactions, that is what we call is, it is done at the end of each day and we call it overnight money market or in some books, uh, you would even refer to the term as short-term money market. So you can, the, the terms are pretty much the same, short-term money market, wherein the banks uh, you know, have to settle their accounts and uh, there is a lot of borrowing and lending just in the overnight market. So exchange settlement account is like pretty much taking it on a very simple layman's approach, how households and firms have the accounts with the commercial banks, commercial banks have an account with the reserve bank, as simple as this. And that account is called the exchange settlement account. What is the purpose of it? To, to settle the intra-bank transactions at the end of each day. And now two more concepts you may want to understand cash rate and interest rate. Interest rate you're already aware of, that is the, the price for money, as in what a household or a firm has to pay to the bank if they borrow money, or what a household or a firm receives, as in for a deposit of their money in the banks. So like if you have a savings account in a bank, you would get some kind of an interest rate. And that's a more technical definition if you would like to hear it is, the interest rate is uh, basically the price for parting with your liquidity. So if you had cash in hand, but instead you choose to put it in the bank, you have done away with your present purchases or the liquid cash in your hand. And that is where it is the, uh, you know, the bank has to give you some kind of a uh, reward as in interest rate, as that's what you could say. And some, sometimes even people refer to it as the price of money but you can get confused with that term if you are using it for exchange rate. So now the cash rate, just like as individuals or households and firms pay to the banks or receive the interest rate from the bank, just the on the same lines, commercial banks 
have to pay this cash rate to the bank if they borrow any money from the reserve bank. We did say that in our earlier lecture that the reserve bank is the banker's bank and it is also the government bank. So whatever money, the, the, the cash rate is the official interest rate that the commercial banks have to be paying to the reserve bank. Or you could even say this cash rate eventually decides on the interest rates between the banks. We discussed it that how the banks will have to settle the transactions between each other at the end of each day. I'm thinking, should I stop here or continue? The, the next section, we will work on this further. So if you, you, you're part of the revision should be right now, have a look through on Google or anywhere else one more time, or especially rather, I would say, go onto the website, Reserve Bank of Australia, and have a look at the concepts of exchange settlement account and the cash rate for start. And we will resume our session in the next one. And that's where I'll take you through what is the interest rate corridor and um, how it is fixed by the Reserve Bank, how Reserve Bank manages to keep the interest rate within a certain range. I hope it 